Hello there. Welcome to my channel. My name's Annette with Sunbeam Fabric Art. Today I'm going to take you on a little journey that took me almost 20 full hours turning this huge, terrible pile of scraps, and I used every single one, into a beautiful bolt, 24 feet long, of beautiful scrap fabric. I store my scraps in a little 13 gallon office trash can and that is all the size that I can handle in my very very small sewing space. And I really kept good track of the time I spent on this project this time. I don't always keep track of how much time I'm spending but I wanted you to know that this is about probably a total of two cubic feet of scraps. So if you imagine two, say, milk carton crates full of scraps, that's about two cubic feet. And if that took me 20 hours to sew into fabric, if you have much more scraps than that, you can just exponentially add how much time it would take you to process that many scraps. Now I did have a few things in my scrap bin that didn't belong there. There were some two and a half inch strips that were already, already pre-cut. I separated those out and put those in their proper place with my other two and a half inch strips. You can see in the lower right, there are some plastic bags that say $5 on them. I picked those up at a garage sale not too long ago, and those are not part of my project today. Now my sewing table does not fit flush against my wall because I have lots of things uh, stashed on the sides of my sewing table like rulers and pressing mats. So I went and got this lid out of my Christmas storage and I pushed that up against the wall so that my scraps would not be falling off the back of my sewing table. And here it is, the large, large pile of scraps that I am going to process, and I do mean all of them. The first thing I'm going to do is fill up all my bobbins because I know I'm going to need them. Now here's my setup. I've got my scraps on the left of my sewing machine, and then I do have a little ironing station set up as well because I will be ironing these scraps once I sew them together in the first round or two. I think there's a saying out there somewhere about a journey of a thousand miles starting with one step and that is what we have here. It's going to feel at the beginning it's going to feel like you've got a thousand miles to go but you've got to start so here we are starting I'm taking two pieces of fabric, placing them right sides together, and stitching them together. Well, if you can believe it, I finished round one. 
stitching all the single pieces together with a second single piece. Separating these chains with my blade saver took about 30 minutes just to separate them. Here is the pile after round one. So every piece has been stitched to a second piece. Now you can see I've got some longer pieces, some medium pieces. I also have some crumb size pieces. We'll talk about that in a little bit. You'll notice I did not pre-press any of my scraps. That is because I knew that after round one for sure, I was going to be pressing open every single unit. And by waiting until I had stitched two together, I only had to press half the amount of scraps. Pressing round one took me a total of two hours. That's right, two entire hours spent pressing these little scraps. Well, let's talk about the different sizes again. I've got some bigger strips, some bigger scraps, some medium scraps, and then tiny crumbs. I decided that after round one, this was a good time to sort my scraps into length. So I did spend some time sorting into length, and then when it came time to sew, it was a lot easier, a lot less to think about. This sorting that you're seeing right now took me 30 minutes. So knowing that I am nine hours into this project so far, and my total time, as I told you at the beginning, was a little over 19 hours. It was actually almost 20 hours. So if you've got a scrap pile to work on and you plan on doing it like I am doing it, plan on round one taking half of the total time. Once you finish round one, you've got about that much time to spend to finish it all up. Well, here we go with round two. And round two is where I am sewing a unit of two to another unit of two to make a total unit of four little scraps. As you watch me sewing these together, you can see why I took the 30 minutes of time that I spent to sort my scraps from round one into sizes. It did make things quite a bit more smooth as I went through and stitched all these together. Now again, as I finish little rounds of various sizes, I'm using that Blade Saver product to separate all these chains, and I can't say enough about it. It's a great little product. I'll leave a link in the description. I don't get paid for that, but I just love the product, and I hope that everybody gets the chance to have one if you're a chain piecer, because it saves so much time. Now, as you know, scraps do not have straight edges, so you will see that as I finish around, after I do the blade saver on it, I go ahead and trim off excess bulk from the seam. Now here I'm probably about, <clears throat> excuse me, about 12 to 13 hours into the project and when you get about this stage, you start feeling like maybe it can happen. Maybe you're going to get it done. Maybe it's not going to be a lost cause. I must confess though, as I went through several of these rounds at the beginning, I was tempted a couple of times just to chuck it all in the trash. I'm sure you know that feeling, but just stick with it and you will get through it. And if you like doing jigsaw puzzles, 
Well, here's your opportunity. These scrap units are looking really good now. I'm starting to feel a little bit more optimistic that I'm going to get through this. Now about this stage, when the scraps are about, say, six to eight inches, um, this is where I like to start adding a straight edge. I'm also gonna take the time to cut off any uh, excess bulk on the seam that you see here. And then I'm just gonna simply open this up and cut myself a nice straight edge. Once all my units have at least one straight edge, I'm going to sort these units out by size of that straight edge. And you'll probably notice I'm cutting that straight edge on the longest edge. Another thing that sorting does for you you get to admire what you've got done so far. It's so fun to see these pretty, pretty scrap blocks coming together. With all those sorted, I started with the smallest size first and started stitching two straight edges together. Then I repeated the process. I cut off the excess bulk, cut a straight edge, sorted them by size, and sewed two straight edges together again. Once my units got really large, for example, almost bigger than my mat in some cases, then I started cutting straight edges on all the sides. This made it much, much easier. There was no more trimming of excess bulk, and uh, I kept sorting them out by size, and sewing sizes together that matched. One thing you've got to do as a sewist when you're working with scraps is come to accept bulky seams. Now I did fiddle around. If I had two seams coming together, I would flip one seam one way, way and one seam the other way to kind of reduce the bulk. But when you're dealing with a scrap project like this, you are not gonna have perfectly flat pressed seams, there's going to be bulk, there's going to be a little element of messiness to it, and that's part of the charm. And one other thing I do on scrap projects, I sew my seams a little bit bigger than a quarter of an inch. When I got to the very last size that I was sewing. I started sewing it like I sew binding strips together. I sewed two pieces together, then I flipped the tail end of that piece back to the front and attached the next piece directly to that.
So here you can see I'm flipping that tail end of that piece that I just stitched to something else. I'm flipping that around right side up. Then I'm taking the next piece and sewing it directly to that piece. And I did have these pieces all stacked up in size order. They were going from about a 20 in inch width all the way down to about a 14 inch width. So I made sure and stitched them together in order. So the large would all be on one side of my bolt and the small would be on the outside of my bolt. Well, at the very end of this sewing here that you see, I snipped these units apart and I had one long strip. I took this one long strip out into my hallway and all the way into my bedroom. And this long strip of fabric measures 24 feet long. Wow, 24 feet long. Yes, it's true, 24 feet feet long. I don't know how many meters that is, but it's a lot of fabric. And it starts at about 14 inches width, and the widest part is about 20 inches wide. So I'm here to say that scraps are so daunting at the beginning, especially that round one that takes half of the total time. It takes forever, it feels like. But as you get closer and closer to the end, and then when you're finally finished and you have this large, large piece of beautiful scrap fabric to show for it, you will feel so great. You will feel so accomplished and so proud of yourself. Now, if you need an idea of how to arrange your scrap bolts, I went down to my Christmas stash again, and I had two empty, almost empty rolls of Christmas wrapping paper. So I took the inside out of them. I'm going to be taping them together and wrapping some packing tape around them to make them nice and sturdy. And then I'm simply gonna wrap my fabric bolt around and around and around and fasten it with some elastic. Okay, here we go. I've got my 24 feet of scrap fabric that I have made all by myself. And I'm going to start with the 20 inch side and just start rolling this up. I'm gonna say it one more time, scraps can be daunting. I hope that watching this video today has inspired you and I hope that you feel empowered to do something with your scraps. This bolt of fabric has come out so beautifully and I can't wait to use it in some projects. I'm so happy you joined me today, thank you, and I hope to see you back again real soon.